If you want to get even more from your Nikon camera, make sure you stick around because in this week's video, I've got some really cool tips I want to share with you so you can get better results and take better photos. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. This week's video is sponsored by NordVPN. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post regular photography tutorials designed to help you get more from your digital camera. In fact, over the past few years, I've shared over 150 tutorials here on my YouTube channel. Of course, they're all free to view and many of the tips are based around getting more from your Nikon camera. In this week's video, I've handpicked a few of my favorite tips that you may have missed. Now my first tip is great if you're a beginner or maybe you've got a brand new camera and you're less familiar with the features. Did you know that most Nikon cameras have a built-in help menu and using this, it can explain what some of the buttons and features do and why you may wish to use them. Let me show you where it is. So let's begin by pressing the menu button. Now, as you scroll through the menu options, of which there are many, you may occasionally see a question mark displayed on the screen. Now, this means help is available. So all you need to do is press the question mark button on the camera, which takes you into the help menu. Here, explaining what white balance is. So if I scroll down again to active D-lighting and I want to know more, I press the button and I see the active D-lighting can improve highlight and shadow detail. Now this is a really great feature and I notice it's turned off. So I'm gonna turn this on. Now in just a second, I'm gonna be showing you the camera's eye menu. You'll be good to know that the help function is also available when using this feature. Next up is the eye button. Found on the back of most Nikon cameras, using this is a much more effective and efficient way of changing some of the camera's key features. Let me show you. Using the eye button, you can access and change camera settings shown on the bottom of the LCD screen. So for example, if I want to select a different focus mode, I press the eye button, select the focus mode option, press OK, and choose the focus mode that suits my subject. AFS for landscapes and non-moving subjects, AFC for moving subjects. Press OK to lock in my selection. Now let's say I want to change my ISO. All I have to do is select ISO from the I menu. Again, press OK and change the ISO. Here, I'm simply gonna reset to my default of 200. So the I button will allow you to access any of these features. Just a quick press, select the option you want, and that's it. It's much quicker than going into the menu. Now, if you're enjoying the video and the tips so far, please consider giving this video a like. All you've got to do is hit the thumbs up icon. You'll find it somewhere down here. Every like helps the video get noticed. That helps the channel grow. Also, don't forget I put out new videos every single week. So you don't miss out, hit the subscribe button. Okay, now I wanna talk about changing the aperture, shutter speed and ISO on your Nikon camera. Now, if you really wanna start getting more from your camera, you may wish to consider getting out of the auto mode and using the camera's manual functions. These include manual, aperture priority, shutter priority and the program mode. Now, if you're feeling really brave and you wanna give manual a go, you're gonna to want to know how to change the aperture, shutter speed and ISO. Let me show you how easy it is to do. So with the camera in the manual mode, I'm now able to change the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO. Let's change the ISO first. I simply press the I button and I can now change the ISO to whatever I want. Next up is aperture. For this particular camera, you will find an aperture button on the top. Now if I hold it down and turn the dial on the back of the camera, I can change the aperture. Now let's imagine I'm taking a landscape photo. I'm going to select F11. This is a great aperture if you want sharper landscapes. Next, I want to change the shutter speed. Now this is the easiest one of all because all you need to do is turn the dial on the back of the camera. A quick look at the light meter, you will see it is showing under exposure. So I'm going to dial to the left to slow the shutter speed down. This will allow more light into the camera and help to balance the light meter. And then I'm ready to take a shot. So to recap, to change the shutter speed, simply turn the main camera dial. Aperture for most cameras is holding down the aperture button and turning the dial. 
For ISO on most Nikons, you can change this using the I menu. Now, of course, the buttons and dials will vary camera to camera. For example, with some larger cameras like the Nikon D7500, this camera has two dials. The one at the front will change the aperture and the one at the rear will change the shutter speed. Also, to change the ISO, there is a button on the top of the camera. So if you do decide to give manual a go so you can be more creative with your camera, my next tip is to make sure that auto ISO is turned off. Take a look at the back of this camera and ISO A is flashing. Now this tells me that auto ISO is turned on. Now you will see that the ISO I have chosen to use is actually 200. However, the camera has chosen to override this and select an ISO of 800. To fix this, I'm simply gonna go into the camera menu and go to ISO sensitivity settings. I'm gonna turn auto ISO sensitivity to off. So now I get the ISO I want. Now I do have some more great tips coming up in just a second, but before I do, a quick word about NordVPN who support this channel and have very kindly sponsored this week's video. Regular viewers will know that I often travel around Brisbane in order to take photos and demonstrate camera techniques. And for me, it's really important that I can do essential things like check and reply to emails, post to socials or update my website, even when I'm away from the office. And I can do all of these things in confidence because I know that NordVPN has me covered and is keeping me and my data safe. A VPN is a service that protects you, your data and your privacy online by encrypting your internet traffic and hiding your IP address, keeping you safe from cyber threats and harmful websites. NordVPN has over 500 servers in 60 countries, so using the app, I can easily select any server I like in any location. So why not give it a go with a choice of three plans to choose from? With Nord's bundle deals, you can enjoy the leading VPN service and secure your connection, passwords and files. Simply click on the link below this video and use the promo code PHOTOGENIUS to get a two-year plan plus one additional month and a huge discount. Plus, it's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. And a big thank you once again to NordVPN for supporting my channel and sponsoring this week's video. Okay, back to the tips. Now this next tip won't apply to every single Nikon camera, but it's just such a great tip that I had to share it with you in this video. And that is the function button. Now this is typically found on the side of the camera next to the lens. So if your camera like this Nikon D3400 has a function button on the side, simply holding the button, and then turn the dial on the back of the camera to change the ISO. This is a great shortcut, but only found on some Nikon cameras. Now, as an alternative to looking through the viewfinder, which is the traditional way of using a camera like this, often most cameras will give you what is called the live view function, where you can actually compose your image using the screen. Now, this can be a great feature, but there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. On this particular Nikon, there's an LV lever on the top. If I pull it towards me, it turns on the live view. Now I can focus as normal. I can also move the focus point around nice and easily. But what you will see is that the focus is very slow and sluggish. So one thing to note is that live view on some cameras, particularly DSLRs, may not be ideal for moving subjects. It's also worth knowing that live view uses significantly more battery than using the viewfinder. Now my next tip is all about image stabilization. Nikon refer to this as vibration reduction or simply VR for short. Now this is not a function that is built into DSLR camera bodies. Instead, it is a function that you may find in some lenses. Now, VR, vibration reduction, is a great feature. It's particularly useful when you're hand holding the camera and it will help to give you steadier images. But if you're using your camera on a tripod, it is recommended that you turn the VR off. Now this particular lens has VR built in, but there is no on off switch like you will find on some lenses. So let me show you how to turn the vibration reduction on and off. If you're using a VR lens, then you may see a hand icon appearing on the LCD screen. This tells us that the vibration reduction is turned on. Now to turn this off, simply go to the menu, select the shooting menu, and then scroll through 
all the different options until you find optical VR and set to off. Reset the screen and you should see the hand symbol has now disappeared. So I really hope you've enjoyed this week's video and you picked up some cool tips. If you did, please give the video a like. It really does make a difference. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on future videos. I want to say a big thank you to NordVPN once again for sponsoring this week's video. And of course, an extra special thank you to you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon. See ya. Bye.